This is Twit. I have to say, I'm a little sad to hear that HBO is going to go kind of go away, merge with Discovery Plus next summer. Yeah, um, so there was a lot of uncertainty around um, what was going to happen with that. There was a rumor that basically they were going to get rid of the whole thing. Now it seems like, based on the earnings call, I literally listened to and was a very interesting earnings call, I have to say. First one under uh, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslov and some of the other execs gave things. There's going to be a new service. They don't know the name of it yet, but it's going to basically combine everything that's in HBO Max and everything that's in Discovery+. Plus. But they admitted, and I appreciated this, that like both apps kind of suck, and <laughs> they have to. Have so to let's fix make things. one app that sucks twice as well. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that this is actually, and this is where I'm a complete nerd on a level that some of the audience will appreciate. I started thinking about like the technological, like the like the requirements of how you would actually design an app like this that's combining the the things from the different services and what like you know like how you would do this as a greenfield app to kind of build a new streaming thing with all these disparate um you know uh, service points that actually was kind of exciting to me but yeah in in theory maybe they'll actually get it right and they'll have like a, a strong you know technical back end so that when you watch euphoria the app doesn't crash but that remains to be determined but uh they are making some changes in terms of what types of content different brands will have and it seems like you know the reality tv stuff is all going to be under discovery and and build enough of that and uh they're not going to be doing the day and date streaming of, of films um both in theaters and online anymore which uh, they already said that was very controversial both with uh, uh creators uh yes. and theater owners uh we liked it yeah. right we liked it <laughs> but but but, but it, it didn't work um and, and i think that at this point it's probably not wrong to say if you're going to do theatrical you need to be pure theatrical if you have shorter windows, you know, if you have 45 days or, or whatever, that's better. And I think that gets you to a service faster. And I think for a lot of people, that's a good um, compromise versus like what the old window used to be. But, you know, um, the the reality is for, and, and I think this is for worse, but the only films that really succeed in the theater are these big like tentpole films. Right. And so smaller films could go directly to streaming and that's okay. But you do, the, then you have the circumstance which got the most controversy, which is, you know, uh, Batgirl, which was done with principal photography. It was in the editing stages. It had already been screened um, in front of test audiences and it's canceled. It's not going anywhere. They are refusing to invest even one more cent in it. They so spent it is, $90 it million dollars on it. Yeah. Uh, is You think it was because it was a terrible movie or do you think they decided that they couldn't make money on it, that spending another think, 100 million to market it would be? I think it's probably both. Yeah. I think it, so. So, I mean, there was a there was some good kind of intel that was coming in that, you know, there were tax reasons to do this. They have until the middle of August to get certain tax write offs based on the previous owners of, of Warner Brothers. Ah, so um, they take and, a 90 and, million and, dollar loss. So exactly. Which which would be good for their tax purposes. I do have to say, though, I think if they thought there was a way where they could invest in another 10 or 20 million to finish the film and sell it to foreign markets uh, where where you know you, you could still sell it and then release it directly to HBO Max even without any um, you know publicity and they could make some of their principal back I think they would have done that but I, it seems like and, and I, I'd heard from a couple of people who would heard internally things that you know that it was just hot garbage that is just an absolutely irredeemable film and so at that point if you're talking about extensive reshoots which is different than just finishing the edit and adding the special effects. <laughs> At a certain point, you are at a sunk cost fallacy, right? You're throwing good money after bad, and and maybe yeah. the best decision okay. is to just say, okay, you know what? Another another administ another you know administration, so to speak, made these decisions. We didn't agree to it. We wouldn't have greenlit this film. It's not testing well. We're not going to put it out because it is bad financially, but also probably because it's not a good film. It's not a thought. precedent. I mean, this is right. I mean, this happens. I would imagine uh, this, this happens a lot. No. No, this is fairly unprecedented for a film to actually be done with principal photography and and, and almost fully at this edited. Stage, and yeah. almost yeah, exactly for it to be at this stage and then for them to shelve it and for it to be a hundred million dollar film that is fairly unprecedented. But I it, can't think of another time. It's also Usually in an era where films. marketing is a huge. I mean, it's going to be more than ninety million dollars. So right. once it gets to that level, then you really have to say, is it worth spending money to market a film that's going to tank? 
I right, guess. Right, right. I mean, to, to me, my, my, my kind of thing, and this is why my initial thought was, this must really not be a good film, was again, if it was just about trying to recoup some of the money, which again, I, this is before I found out about the tax element, which complicates things. I was thinking, okay, well, again, like if all you had to do was, was finish the edit, uh, not getting reshoots into it, you could sell it into certain foreign territories where that licensing money would, would True. bring back a lot of it. And then you could just release it straight to- Straight to streaming, streaming is not Without bad. any publicity, right? Yeah. You could do that. The thing is though, if it's gonna require, say even like a 40 or $50 million commitment, at that point, I think that completely changes the financial calculus. And so, especially if they're getting the tax write off, I, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate to see, you know, a, a, a film that, you know, was led by like an Afro Latina, like, you know, that, that, that that's, it's, it's like, a, it's bad optically for them to get rid of the film. But I haven't heard anybody coming out of the woodwork being like, no, this was actually a really great script and a really great movie. Like no one's saying that. The best everybody's saying is, oh no, it's not as bad as you thought. Like <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty that, bad. That, which, which is kind of damning with faint praise, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so I don't know, but it is fairly unprecedented, which is why Okay. I think a lot of us were shocked because usually like you see it with television pilots, you might see, you know, films going, you know, shelved or go direct to DVD, but usually not hundred million dollar films that are part well, of a big franchise. They did also cancel Scoob Holiday Haunt, which yeah. was- Yeah, see, see that, <laughs> see that makes total sense, right? That the sort of thing happens all the time, but-, but uh, That was but, not, wait a minute, it was 95% finished. Uh, I know I'm not the audience for it, but uh, the the creators said the audiences liked it, and this is kind of a, a, a no brainer for making money because right. of it's the time of year that it would appear, which is after Halloween before Christmas. Um, all right, who knows? You know, it's not my business; it's their business. They get to do whatever they want. I wonder if the merging of Discovery Plus and HBO Max is an acknowledgement that there are too many streaming services. The people yeah. are tired of spending so much money on separate services. Yeah, well, that's sort of been David Zaslav's whole thing. Like, this was actually one of the reasons why you know he shut down CNN Plus basically as soon as the company took over. Like, they they killed it because um, they basically he'd said like very publicly that he thought that having all these individual streamers and these individual services was a problem, and that you should just have these big omni services because Discovery had tried, and and he's like been public about this. Like, they tried to have many different sub streaming networks for a long time and it, and it wasn't successful. And then they were like, okay, we're just going to do Discovery Plus. And What's so Discovery I that, Plus? I don't know. What's on Discovery so Plus? It, it, so it's, it's basically everything from the various Discovery channels. So like, and, and but, but that includes TLC and some of the other stuff. So you see some originals. It's all the Housewives like shows. All no, the... no, 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 that's on Peacock. That's Peacock, uh, okay. it, it, it more be like the 90 Day Fiance uh, universe is, is who Discovery Plus has. <laughs> okay. Very um, important to make a distinction. Very, very, yes. very important. Well, yeah, no, no, because Bravo's a step up. No, I, I want to be very clear here. Bravo's a step up, right? Like Bravo kidding. like spends, a, oh yeah, that's... spends way more money on reality, 100%. <laughs> Discovery is like low on the totem pole, right? But they also have like the chip in and, and, uh, um, uh, Joanna Gaines stuff and like a lot of the so here's you know, the, the slide the things. that David Zaslav showed explaining yep. why these are unique and complementary properties. HBO Max, he said, has a male skew. It's scripted, sure, Game of Thrones. It's lean in. It's appointment viewing. It's the home of fandoms. Yeah, I think that's true. Discovery Plus, female skew, unscripted, lean back, comfort viewing, the home of genre dums. Does that seem fair? It seems to me if those these are so antithetical, you don't want to combine them into one service. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I'm probably the rare person who enjoys the absolute trash. And let's be very clear, it is absolute <laughs> you, trash you of, of the 90 Day Fiance no, universe. I'm with you. And, not, and, the, and, and, with and, you. and the Prestige TV. I love them both. So I'm yeah. actually excited to not have to pay for them both, to be honest with yeah. you. No, I'm, I'm with you, Tristine. I'll take all the trashy shows. I just want my brain to melt. If I'm watching something, I don't want to have to think or analyze. Right. I just want my brain which is, to melt. I want which is, all I have the to say, And that is honestly what Discovery is great for. And they've made a ridiculous you, amount of money off of the worst stuff imaginable over the years. And, and uh, you know, whereas HBO was highbrow. So I, I don't know if this works or not, but I mean, certainly if you have them in different tabs and if you're not advertised, like if you're not promoting, and I'm sure that, they would not want to do this because their algo would be smarter than that. As long as you're not recommending, you know, like certain content to the people who only want, you know, Game of Thrones or Sopranos reruns, like, you know, it probably 
does make sense, at least for, for families who have people with different tastes watching something. I don't know. I don't, I mean, it sounds like you're replacing one brain fry for another. You would you would rather watch 90 Day Fiance, get your brain mushed that way, than trying to figure out what streaming service it's on. Like, right. There's too many. Right. There's just way too many. Like, we can only... Like people, especially now, they, you know, when we're dealing with what are we going to be buying, where are we going to be spending money, and we don't have as much, you just can't buy all of them. And because they're all splintered off, exactly. people are choosing yeah. to buy something for a it's, month, binge it, record it, and yeah, they're done, and then subscribed. go to the next one. It keeps it's them the worst yeah. of cable. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it basically yes. we've taken the worst aspects of cable and and uh, you know made it part of like but the, the streaming dichotomy. If I'm tuning, if I'm sitting down on a Sunday night to watch Game of Thrones and I get 90 Day Fiance, <laughs> I but may what not if you be can happy. do both? What if you can do both? Right. You can watch Game of Thrones and then you can watch 90 Day Fiance as well. <laughs> right. You can enjoy Love After Lockup and Euphoria. I think you know? like it's I think there's a lot of couples that are going to be causing some real friction. In many in many households, where you know she wants to watch Ninety Day Fiance, I want to watch Game of Thrones, and they're both. I mean, this is not. Or, or do you think? Well, oh, we'll both agree. Let's buy. We should definitely buy HBO Disco Max. <laughs> uh, it's very confusing. I don't. Know. We'll see. This is an interest. Look, he's trying stuff. I'm not a also, David Zaslav fan. I've got to say, he's smart. He's smart. I mean, he's smart, what I commented. He's cynical that, and he's greedy. He is cynical. Here's the interesting thing, though. I've never seen this before. I've never seen um, someone, you know, a company who come in, came in who, you know, bought obviously like like Warner Brothers uh, from and and you know Turner all, all, all apart from you know Warner Media, to basically then go around and undo every major decision that the previous owners made. Oh, he made. did like, too. The, yeah. The, instantly, like that. This entire thing has been like nothing but a referendum on John Stanky, who's you know, CEO of at and and Jason Kilar, who he put in charge of, of, of Warner Media. Like literally every decision that they've made from the name HBO Max, which look, I think it's a great service. It's my favorite service. I think we can all agree the name is terrible. Um, to the day and date theater thing, to CNN Plus, to all these these other kinds of decisions but HBO going Max in. was already diluted. Like it took HBO, right, I agree. which was I agree. very clear. And then they added a bunch of stuff that isn't HBO. Exactly. And exactly. now they're, I, I, look what they say right. the, the top franchises are. This is another Zaslov slide. HBO, yep. Discovery, oh, CNN, HGTV, so CN, and DC, Looney Tunes. What are the franchises? You got Batman. You got, what's that, wrestling or uh, Wonder, Wonder Woman? Woman. Okay. Wonder Woman. Wonder <laughs> I confuse this with the WWE <laughs> logo, Superman. Then there's Shark Week. Then there's Game of Thrones. Oh. Then there's 90 Day Fiance Universe. <laughs> Then yep. there's Harry okay. Potter. I like I like all of this. Okay. Same. I was gonna say I'm into I'm, all I'm of in. it. I'm all in. A bra? What about what about you? Okay, well, I think the only thing I've never heard someone say, Hey, do you have a Discovery Plus account so I can use your password? You're dead on. Like, never. You're dead you on. Know? Absolutely. Point. Yeah. <laughs> That Absolutely. Like, I, I only I only have it because it's free. I only have it because I get it for right. free with my browser. See, there you account, go. To be honest. Yeah. And that's the only way I've been, almost been tempted to get it is because I also have it free through a Verizon account. But yeah, it's like, you know, HBO Max is one of those platforms where it's like, oh, I got somebody's password. I'm all set. Uh, right. Got, you know, because as we discussed, there are too many streaming platforms. And mm -hmm. so everyone's just borrowing passwords, which is why Netflix is now trying to crack down on that and make people pay if they share their passwords. But yeah, but yeah, I think it's, I think this is a good way to force people to to um, watch the shows that are on Discovery Plus because it's I, like right there. I yep. deeply, I deeply regret getting Peacock because then we discovered the Below Deck <laughs> reality I, TV I was show gonna, I was going to say, I was going to say again, like this is higher, this is higher quality. The Below Deck, which is kind of part of the the Vanderpump Rules, you know, Roni kind of, you know, whole whole universe. Yeah, I agree. It's terrible, but it's better than the the quality of now the Discovery stuff. Which Lisa's to be clear, I, I saying, love. we used to get two below decks a week. There was below deck down under and below yeah. deck med, and now we only get one below deck a week. She was upset that there isn't more below deck. But good news, there's like going to be two more below decks. Oh yeah. The yeah, whole yeah. premise of this, if for, if you're smart and you have never heard of this thing, is it is kind of the upstairs downstairs for the giant mega yacht set. So you're following these poor people who live in these little tiny cabins and they're right on top of each other as they serve the most entitled awful people in the world above decks on these super yachts. And mm -hmm. uh, and then the drama that ensues, it's and and what's hysterical is it's a reality show 
where the the camera people, the producers, they're, they're all on the yacht. They're all che like cheek by jowl. Everybody's jammed in together, and they can't they can't get off. It's actually a great idea for a show. That's awesome. I know. It's, 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 it's honestly very watchable. I enjoy I enjoy the whole Bravo universe. I'm so embarrassed. Cohen, we have very, watched. Very smart. It, it started, I was looking for something because we couldn't travel in pandemic. And I thought, oh, good. We'll get to see, you know, beautiful sunsets in, in the Caribbean or whatever. And we have now watched literally every single Below Deck show. We went all the way back, all the way forward. We've hundreds of hours. I love it. Lost to that franchise. Lost, though, I think it's worth it. It seems seems like you I shouldn't time feel well guilty? invested. You're saying no. I shouldn't feel guilty? This is based on how you it. summarized it. Bless yeah, you. Yeah, this sounds mm -hmm. great. Yeah. I made it sound <laughs> better than it is. It's decompression, right? You need to have some stuff, especially when you're with public, you have to always be yep. on camera, dealing with people. It's really nice to just have something where you don't have to fix, deal with it, and you can just enjoy it like candy. It's like Aww. brain candy. Exactly. You guys are great. And it's just on in the background. Aww. I mean, I will say, he's right. It is lean back stuff because you're not paying attention. No, if you, if you miss no I got my matter. phone open. I got my iPad exactly. open. I got my laptop. I'm it's playing very relaxing. Wordle. Yeah, right. Because sometimes, you know, the shows, as much as we're in like, TV and it's great, you have to pay so much attention to every little thing. It's true. That it, 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 it's, it, true. it's like a chore. It is not a chore to watch Below Deck. Like, no. You know? It's not a chore. <laughs> Sandy Yawn, Captain Sandy, is coming to Santa Rosa in a couple of months. And Lisa says, we're getting tickets, right? I say, to see Love the it. yacht captain, what is she going to talk about? Uh, swabbing the poop deck. I don't know, but we're going to go see her, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> That'd be a great trip. You have to be like stuck in the show. You are now below deck. They like you. Yeah. Pay all this money. You're they stuck. make all this they money. They won't let you you're out. Stuck there. You're yeah. Oh my god! Isn't that, is, isn't that the Star Wars experience? Yeah. Like at you're the, in the hotel. Is, 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 you can't the, leave. the hotel, like yeah. where where you where you spend all that money for the yeah. terrible hotel room, and then you're part of the the, 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 the cosplay thing. That's basically exactly. what they've done. Bravo, because there's a Bravo con. They should totally do that. They could, they could auction off oh, in a blow deck yeah. experience, and they could make so much money. I'm not even joking. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't pay for oh, it because yeah. I I, no. I I I I I like my space too much. But I would. There would be so many people who would pay for a blow deck experience. The, the best part is, is, you know, you're you're always trying to figure out well who of the crew is going to hook up because it's that's right. like the whole show. That's the whole point of the show. Yeah, the whole point of the show. Who's going to hook up? <laughs> And they never do because there's cameras everywhere. There's nowhere private at all. Uh, but then the the guests on these shows are the worst people. They've actually gotten a little better. I think they must have gotten some notes from people saying, "Don't make them so horrible," or something. Or maybe they've watched the show and they now know they're going to be. It's going to be permanent record. But they're nicer than they used to be. They used to be like they had the woman who was the uh, the Queen of Versailles. You know that documentary about yeah the the woman who married the the eight hundred year old timeshare magnet, <laughs> and she she had a little dog's poop all over the house because she couldn't be bothered to take him out for a walk. <laughs> she gets on the yacht. That's fun. That's fun. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I got to get going because there's a there's a show tonight. I don't want to miss. It.